Hello and good morning. Welcome to Coffee with Kablik. My name is Amber and I'm a business and technology librarian at the Boston Public Library at the Kirstein Business Library and Innovation Center. Today we have with us Belle Lipton from the Leventhal Map Center, Map Hello and Education Center. Good morning. Center. Welcome to Coffee with Kablik. Uh -oh. My name is Amber. I had that streaming by <laughs> in the background. Whoops. <laughs> um, and so today with us, we have Belle Lipton of the Leventhal Map and Education Center. So I'm just going to have a little agenda about what we're going to talk about today. So what is Coffee with Kabalik? Coffee with Kabalik is an opportunity for folks to get together virtually and discuss topics. Last week, last episode, we talked about integrating business and sustainability with Dr. Venkatesan. And you can find that in the playlist uh, that will be linked down below. Uh, Dr. Venkatesan had a and I had a wonderful discussion. I hope you check that episode out. But this episode, we're going to talk about cartography and its applications, including how to use the data to make uh, uh, compelling arguments and tell stories using that data. And Belle is going to talk about some resources, and we'll point out some resources as well on the BPL website. And then we'll also have time to answer your questions. Uh, and hopefully, if folks can tweet at us, um, you can um send us your coffee cups so the you can comment in the live chat if you have more in-depth questions you can always email us at ask at bpl.org you can tweet at us with that coffee uh, at bpl kirstein with the coffee with kavalik chat and you can also leave us a voicemail uh and we have drop-ins too uh so without further ado i'm going to introduce or let bell speak so hi, Belle. Thanks for joining the us today on this on this morning. Hey, Amber. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so Belle, to get things sort of kicked off and started, can you tell us a little bit about what is the MAP Center and um, actually sort of what you do at the MAP Center? Sure, sure. I'd love to. Um, yeah, so for people who aren't already familiar with the Leventhal Map and Education Center, uh, we are an independent nonprofit and we're located at the Central Library uh, right in Copley Square. Um, we care for over uh, 200,000 maps, almost a quarter million maps uh, that uh, are located right at the central branch of the library. We broadly focus on issues uh, related to people and places, looking through the lens of history and geography. Um, and we do that through lots of different ways. Um, we, we do educational programs and outreach, uh, really cool exhibitions. And we also offer research services, which is uh, mostly what my job is at the, at the Leventhal Map and Education Center. So mm -hmm. I'm the geospatial librarian there. So I help people find data, uh, learn how to interpret that data and use that data um, you know, through different tools and softwares. Um, so yeah, that's the, the nutshell version. <laughs> sure. Oh, well, thank you so much for that nice description. So can you tell us actually a little bit about some of the questions that you field? Because um, you are a librarian. Uh, what kind of questions do you see? What kind of things are people asking you when they come into the MAP Center? Yeah, yeah, we get lots of lots of questions. Uh, I'll, I'll focus on the ones that I get sort of mm -hmm. uh, as a geospatial research librarian. Uh, and um, because we, you know, care for historic objects, as well as also help people understand modern data, we really see like a huge breadth of different questions. Um, so sometimes we'll have people that want to be able to access our historical maps, want to learn how to bring them into, um, you know, geospatial software and, uh, you know, be able to analyze uh, problems that have uh, historical spatial origins okay. uh, throughout time. So that's sort of one vein of questions that I get a lot. Another vein of questions I get a lot are related to finding and using modern data. So um, for instance, if you wanted to be able to look at how um, any sort of demographic uh, breakdowns in the city of Boston, um, you know, impact any, you know, whatever uh, factor you're trying to look at, you would need to be able to use, um, find and use census data, which is inherently geographic. So I, I get a lot of questions related to how to find and use um, census data. Okay. That's kind of like um, an overview of this sort of uh, broad, uh, you know, amount of things that we can help with. 
So I actually brought up the research page and I'm going to put it in the chat for folks if they want to link to it later. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. So on this research page, it gives some idea of um, exactly what folks are looking for. So it gives you, it says research at the map and education center and you can make appointments and it has a little questionnaire. Um, but there's actually um, another tab, right? This reference one that has uh, a little bit more specific um, specialized yeah. services, Amber. right? Yeah, Amber, this um, this main one is what you fill out if you want to access and come and see any of our historical collections. Um, ah. Yeah, because we, I, I'm not the only librarian at the MAP Center. We also have a reference librarian who can, if you have any question of any of the almost mil a quarter million maps in our collections, our reference librarian, Lauren, can help you answer those questions. Oh, and, wow. And, you know, before the shutdown, we also would let you, all you need is your uh, BPL card, mm -hmm. and you can come and look at uh, these amazing documents that go back to, you know, the 1400s. Uh, we're hoping to resume those services as soon as we can. Uh, but for now, we still can uh, field those questions online. Uh, so that main research page is a great place to start to learn, um, you know, uh, how to see or learn about our historical collections. And then okay. if you go to that geospatial tab, you'll find our um, our GIS services. Okay, so I clicked on this geospatial data and reference, and this is exactly sort of, um, this is where you can see uh, the stuff that you specifically handle, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Ah, so there's a bunch of guides on here as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, are there any guides you'd like to point people to in particular? So if I click on this research guides uh, link, um, mm -hmm. is there a particular guide that people might want to look at if they're just getting getting started? Yeah, if you scroll down uh, on the page, oops, uh, go back to the main sorry, go back to the main like GIS. We're, we're also in the process of relaunching our website. It should be uh, up next sure. month. So, but all the, most of the stuff will stay the same, but Amber, if you go back to the last, the main geospatial page that you were just on. Oh, the one with the form? Mm-hmm. Okay, sure. It might take a little for it to show up <laughs> on your side. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, in any case, I can chat about it. We, um, from that main page, you'll find um, uh, the, our main sort of like guides pages um, that, that are specifically tailored to working with geospatial data uh, mm -hmm. we're working with geospatial software. Um, so this link right here that says Cartonel, the LMEC uh, documentation database. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> I think there's a lag in what, like I'm trying to watch the. Um... <laughs> yeah, there is a lag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, in any case, yeah, we got lots of really great stuff there. Um, mm -hmm. So this first one right there that says a tutorial for getting started um, installing the open source GIS software QGIS is a really amazing resource that we've actually just recently. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. Also, I will hey, why say, don't I, why don't I just put the link right here? That, yeah. that, that I think that will be a tash easier. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, I'll just pull that up from the chat then. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll put it right in YouTube. How about that? Oh, yes. Uh, here we go. So this is our, our recently published guide on uh, learning how to download and use QGIS, which is an amazing uh, desktop, free desktop software um, that people can basically do anything that you could do using mm -hmm. um, a geos the sort of uh, common geospatial software people might be familiar with, which is Esri ArcGIS. Right. Um, we, we typically uh, go under the assumption that um, you don't want to pay for, for licenses. Like if you do have questions about using uh, some of the uh, paid software like Esri or ArcGIS online, we can certainly help with those questions as well. Mm -hmm. Cause I know that there are a lot of um, great tools that they offer and some free tools as well. Nice. Um, so we definitely do help with those, but in general um, we typically refer people, you know, immediately uh, uh, to QGIS just because it's free and you can do so much with it. So very recently, we've put up this new um, guide for how to like, sometimes like downloading it, there's like a few different options. So right. like, which one do I pick? And then once I have it, like, uh, how do I like, what are, what are all the different menus? And like, so that this guide kind of like goes through just the basics of that. 
Um, so that would be a, a great one to get started with um, before you start to launch into like a specific project. Sure. Now, I which chat did you put that link in? I put, I put it right into the um, YouTube like Coffee with Kablik video. Oh, weird. I don't <laughs> see it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh -oh. Well, I'll just send it to you then. And <laughs> I yeah. appreciate you uh, uh, troubleshooting this. It seems like a complicated setup. So. It's not. It's just, uh, you know, I feel like with the weather, I was tell I was ta tell talking to Belle earlier. I, uh, I lost power briefly this oh, no. morning. So it's like yeah. really weird. And like, I can look out my window right now and it's crazy rain. And um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. So if you could send me that, I just have a question um, about some of the other uh, things that you see. Like, what are people well, people actually able to do with maps? Like, you know, it's kind of like most people, when they think of maps, they either think of like, well, I've got somewhere to go or I want to <laughs> show um, something like um, I want to... Um, I don't know. You know what I mean? Uh, I just want to show some population data, but there's other things that you can, you can, um, you can show with maps. Correct. Yes. Yes. I think that you did a good, a good job sort of breaking down like the difference between, uh, what we talk about as being like reference maps versus thematic maps. Reference so, versus thematic. Yeah. So like sometimes, uh, you'll see a map that was made tr truly just to get from like point A to point B. Mm -hmm. Um, like I, I would say something like Google maps would be like a reference map and there's lots of, you know, like when you have your old road, road maps and stuff like that, uh, that's typically like, you know, would fall under that category, but a lot of different, uh, you know, a lot, another sort of category of maps is th thematic maps. And what people are trying to do there is okay. they're trying to look comprehensively at some kind of like phenomena or pattern and make some kind of visual argument with it. Sure. Um, and, you know, we, we really focus a lot on, on stuff like that at the Leventhal Map and Education Center mm -hmm. because, um, you know, really that's what a lot of maps are. They're, they're visual arguments and it's, it's basically just like visual rhetoric and it's using data, um, <clears throat> you know, whether that's data that, uh, you know, the information is, is represented in this visual format. And so we're really, really interested in helping people start to think about how to evaluate the information, right? Right. Just like how um, a librarian would go and talk about how to find a list of citations and look at if that source is authoritative or not. Um, mm -hmm. We're very interested in helping people look at the data information sources and try to be able to understand whether the data that's being represented on the map, first of all, is a good source of data. Um, mm -hmm. Even if it is a good source of data, um, like, is it being shown in a way that makes you know, it makes sense. And, uh, you know, what are sort of, what might be the sort of motivations of the person that made it? Right. Uh, who do they work for? Who's paying for it? Uh, -huh. stuff like that. So, you know, we, we do that through, um, looking at historic examples from our amazing collections. We also do, uh, you know, help you help you make maps that are, you know, persuasive, you know, persuasively support, uh, whatever you're trying to show, right. If you're trying to show like, Hey, we need more, mm -hmm. uh, say we, we need to open a library branch here because look at how much you know look how many people would use it like you know we can we can help you try to make a gather data and make a map that um that would support that argument sure um we have a, a slightly different question and it was it was from a from Sharon asking are you looking for additional maps to digitize oh that's a good question yeah uh well I'll say that um, we have a very, very teeny, teeny, tiny fraction of our of our massive map collection available digitally. Like we have, like I said, over 200,000 maps and mm -hmm. I think only just north of 10,000 are available in our digital co collections, oh, wow. which is quite a lot. I mean, you could spend hours looking through our digital collections. Um, the link to that is collections.leventhalmap.org if anybody's interested in mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> spending your entire morning <laughs> looking at <laughs> cool stuff. Um, but yes, the, the, to answer your question, Sharon, um, we are constantly uh, thinking about what we want to uh, get into that collections portal. Um, 
from our from our existing um, uh, huge map collection. And so I think right now we're working um, to sort of increase availability to uh, 20th century maps. So we're going through some of the old like uh, BRA archives and trying to find some cool city plans from uh, that are sort of later to kind of augment the, the the temporal extent of our of our digital holdings right now. So basically, that's what we do is we'll try to um, evaluate which uh, sort of segments of our collections um, will uh, help out with whatever we're trying to do. So whether we're trying to do a new exhibition on a topic, we'll mm -hmm. say, oh, we should put these maps in our digital collection so people can learn about them through this exhibition. Or we're trying to teach a certain topic um, in a K through 12 class and the students and teachers want to learn about a certain thing, we'll say, oh, we should prioritize digitizing these ones um, so that people can access those um, digitally. Wow. So it was a great question and, and thanks for giving that wonderful answer. Uh, yeah, thanks, you guys Aaron. do so much. Um, and I was able to get the QGIS uh, guide up. So uh, I also put that in the chat. So if people want access to that, they can click on both of those links. Uh, I put the collections link in the chat thanks, as well. Thanks, Sharon. Sorry that link was broken. We're, we're working on, we're, hopefully we can do another one of these soon where we give you a tour around our sparkly new website next month. <laughs> That'll be exciting. Yeah. Um, but p uh, up until then, people can play around with the wonderful resources you guys mm -hmm. have. Um, so another question I was going to ask is, um, I had sent you a map earlier today. I don't know if you saw it, um, but I had a question about how someone might make the map um, that I sent you. Um, it's, it's kind of this funny thing I found online, but it was uh, someone online made a map and it says, uh, nobody lives here. <laughs> So uh, I gave you the link in the Zoom chat, but mm -hmm. it says there are nearly 5 million census blocks with zero population. So mm -hmm. how would someone go about making a map like this? Or what kind of data, where would they like harvest the data from to make mm -hmm. a map like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is a, thank you so much, uh, Amber, for finding uh, some cool maps for us to look at and try to dive into how how they might be made. Um, with this particular map, it, it is true that this is is gathered from census data. Okay. And this is definitely something that we can help you with. So um, if you are trying to make a map like this, you could um, just let us know, uh, send us an email and say, hey, this, you know, I'd really like to show this, this phenomenon. Like, you know, this seems really interesting to me. And I know I kind of need to use population data, but I'm not sure like where I want to, where I should get it or how mm -hmm. I should download it. Um, and what we would do is we would point you to, um, you know, one of many different resources to uh, look at or download census data. There's a couple of tools out there that people might be familiar with or might be new to people. Um, there's the main sort of census website, uh, mm -hmm. which you, you can go to American Fact Finder. It is it, it's good for some things. Uh, great, great for facts. We, we tend to uh, refer people to the uh, NHGIS.org. Uh, which is maintained by the Minnesota Population Center for uh, accessing geospatial demographic information published by the census because it is just a nice way to be able to um, handle the geospatial attributes um, easily. Yep. Uh, and they've got lots of great stuff. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Okay, that's so cool that you have it pulled up. Great. Um, yeah, so in this case, um, what I would do is I would help you think about things like, um, you know, what is the temporal extent that you're trying to mm -hmm. think about like do you want to show um data from this year or do you want to show data from 1790 when the first census started or sort of a show how things have changed over time um yeah if you if you go ahead and click on that get data uh, button right there that's how you get to their main sort of search interface okay and yeah and then uh the the nhgis will ask you questions about like what um what uh different filters you want to apply so you can say in this case in the map that you um showed us uh it's i believe it's looking at block levels so <clears throat> basically because um you know when you're accessing census data you're not you're not seeing like 
every single person's exact answer to the census, right? right? That would be like a huge violation of people's privacy. So (laughs) what they try to do is they try to aggregate it to different geographic, statistical, and administrative units um, that are standardized. Uh, So like a very broad one would be at the state level. So like- we're going to aggregate all the information to the state level. So when mm-hmm. you see a map, you can see like however many people live in this state. Okay. Okay. A very, very, very small unit would be the block. So if you want to just tab back over to that map um, that you showed, uh, you can see that like the units of the ge- geographic units, like, you know, in the map that you mm-hmm. sent. Um, yep. Sorry, I think I'm seeing the lag. So <laughs> I'm like, where is it? <laughs> Yes, yes. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, you can see here that these like geographic units that they're showing are very, very fine detail. So, mm-hmm. um, so we might talk through like what the different considerations are when you're wanting to use um, data that's been aggregated to such a fine level. Okay. Um, right, like it might not be as, it might be a little bit shakier in terms of depending on like what uh demographic features you're trying to think about um but in this case i think like just popular like raw population counts uh you know where you're showing like zero people live here uh, i think that's pretty straightforward right Mm -hmm. and um you know you can what you would do is you would in that nhgis data extract tool select that you want to see total population at the block level okay um, probably at the most recent decennial census, which is the 2010 census, although we're, mm-hmm. we're waiting on the edge of our seats for the, <laughs> for the 2020 data to be available, right? Yes. And, um, and yeah, then basically- So do I just hit the plus sign and it should- Yeah, yeah, it? you can, you don't, I think it would probably be like a long elaborate process to do it uh, live here, but, cause you'll have to, what you will have to do is you'll have to sit, uh, submit your extract request and it will take a few seconds and you'll have Uh, to like log it. It's basically like kind of like Amazon (laughs) um, where you have to like, you make like a little account. It is Uh, free. Yeah. Uh, I see up in the corner. Yeah. Like sometimes your, your, um, your queries can be a little bit um, complex. Like you'll say, I want to see every person who's over the age of 65 who, you know, drives a car to work um, and lives here you know um and so it takes it a second to generate that extract okay um and yeah uh the the data will be downloaded and then you'll join it with the geographic equivalent of the you know you'll take the statistical data you'll join it to the to the geographic data and then you make a map in QGIS (laughs) Uh, (laughs) so that's like the nutshell version or I guess it's kind of a comp it's 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 we're he- that's why we're here to help you is that there are things that you definitely want to think about when you're working with this it's not always very straightforward um <clears throat> there especially as you start to get into um you know some of these considerations like how are these how are these geographic units drawn like who did that <laughs> okay you know like how did they who when they asked this question like how did they ask it? And, you know, so those are the types of things that we, we, especially when you're working with um, in data about people, right? This is, and ma- these have major implications as well, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So those that's are the why it's important to answer the census. If you yes, haven't, exactly. yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so um, I have another, um, I have another uh, map for you actually. Okay. You, Cause I, I just check the chat and see anything, but let me actually just check the chat and make sure that, uh, let's see. Yeah. So, um, this map is actually made by the mass, uh, office of public, uh, Massachusetts public health association. And this is about, um, and this is where the Christine business library and innovation center sort of ties in with you guys. And it's about, um, food deserts. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just popped it into the, um, the uh, chat so you could see. Um, And actually, I'll also pop it into the chat so people can also follow along. But I was gonna say, here's this Massachusetts public health. um, And um, do you see it yet? Uh, I can click on the link that you post in YouTube, but yep. I don't 
see it yet on the like YouTube video screen. Oh, oh, because I have you <laughs> up. <laughs> I know. Wow, that's me. That's not a map. <laughs> yeah. So sorry, I forgot to switch views. That's still getting the hang of this. This is kind of a funky format. Ideally, um, people would oh. just be standing around like uh, a we fun little. We would be chatting. We'd yeah. be having a little coffee. I know. Yeah. I'll someday. Yeah, someday I got my uh, Massachusetts runs on Duncan coffee mug, you know. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I see it. Um, I'm going to actually go into the link so I can look at it closer and see like where the data comes from. Sure. Um, let's see. So we're okay. So we're looking at food deserts. Uh, yeah, I think that this stuff is made available through the Department of Agriculture. Mm hmm um yes 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 um yeah yeah here is i can pop a link over to you um i'm sure. not sure if people are trying to truly make recreate this map with the data but this is where i would start at least to okay. try to find something like this um and yeah okay. uh, this is just another example of something that um is collected and made available uh through um you know through these national programs that we can help you find you know and i think that in this case we're we're showing like a um you know just a screen like a sort of snippet of massachusetts but i, I do think that this might be like a national set i'm not positive but we could look into it more for sure yeah so these sets are published a lot of these sets are published by the government but mm -hmm. um how do you know and you touched on this a little bit earlier uh, by saying like who's funding what, but how do you know <laughs> what data is good data? Yeah, exactly. And I would, I would definitely, um, I would definitely, I think that what caused me to like find this link of where this is made available is looking at it. Uh, it's a combination in this case of um, it's, there's like this little footnote here that says this data includes a wide range of both chain and independent grocery stores, mm -hmm. including supermarkets, super centers, and mid-sized grocery stores. Mm -hmm. Stores included in the data have annual sales volumes of 2 million or more, which is the standard industry definition of a supermarket. And then down in the bottom, you can see data sources, Nielsen TD link services. <laughs> Uh, and then from 2016, and then the Massachusetts Department of Public Health 2013, and the U.S. American Community Survey, uh, the 2011-2015 uh, estimates. Mm -hmm. And so basically, what they're doing is they're trying to uh, combine this data, which is com you know collected commercially, but probably made available through this Department of Agriculture, and mm -hmm. combining it with like demographic data uh, made possible through like public health, you know, the public health department and the, uh, mm -hmm. the census is would be my first stab at it, but can probably dig deeper too to investigate. Yeah. So that's interesting. And then they drew these shapes, I would assume. You're <clears throat> sorry, let me pull it up again. Uh, these are probably, sorry, it's kind of like blurry and hard to see, but if it's saying low grocery sales and low income, my guess is that what they're trying to do is they're trying to show again, like census, uh, census geographies, right? Cause they're trying to take the combination of, they're not just saying like, <clears throat> these are areas that have low grocery sales. Mm -hmm. They're saying these are areas that we should focus on because they're areas that not only have low grocery sales, but they also have low income. And so my guess is that they're, I, again, I'd have to look at it more closely, mm -hmm. um, but my guess is that they're trying to identify first these areas that, um, you know, using these like census geographies again, probably at the like, uh, maybe Block this level. county, I don't uh, no, yeah, maybe this is track. I have to look at it. It's hard. It's kind of small and blurry. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Uh, um, I, I have a blown up version of the Suffolk mm -hmm. County map, um, just like mm -hmm. on the uh, on the uh, screen for the folks. I hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I was oh, like, I can oh. See, oh yeah, I can see Boston here. Yeah. yeah. So this. Yeah. 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 So um, I was going to say we have. Um, kind of an interesting tool that folks can use if they just wanted to find grocery stores in the area. We actually have two tools, um, Demographics Now, actually three tools, Demographics Now, 
uh, A to Z databases and uh, Mergent Intellect, all of which you can download data from and include coordinates. On. So cool. <laughs> yeah. So uh, often, do you often po point people to some of those resources as well? Um, you know, it's funny that you asked. We actually just talked about um, uh, the A to Z data base like this morning uh, in one of our staff chats because we were talking about um, uh, we, we wanted to look at making a map of um, of dance halls <laughs> just for this like fun social media thing we're doing. And okay. uh, we were thinking about, well, how can we find all the different um, all the different dance halls across uh, across the country? And, uh, you know, we were saying that the A to Z data, one of the benefits, and yes, I, I think that it's a great place to go when you're trying to find um, some type of business or some type of industry, like, you know, that has been defined, like, in a standard way. Uh, I, I do use that a lot uh, because it organizes everything by the, the business makes codes. Exactly. Um, which are so, like, comprehensive. Uh, and then you can, yeah, you can extract the data by the, by the coordinates so that you could use it to make a map. So yes, I definitely, I definitely have referred people to this before. So I've, I'm pulling it up cause I've definitely goofed around with this, um, <laughs> just to be like, oh, you know, what can you find? Dance? Can you pull up, can you pull up the codes too? I feel like that those are always fun to look at. Like I always, I always love like looking at code books that are just like so specific, <laughs> you know, it always kind of makes my, oh yeah. Gear it makes my gears turn in my head where it's like, wow, I didn't know that we had data that like showed this specific uh, granularity of like a type of thing. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So like, um, I, I always, uh, I, another thing that we can help you with too, is if you're, if you're struggling to make sense of a data set or a database and you're not sure like what, mm -hmm. the, what it's representing, like we can help you find code books to help you like interpret mm -hmm. the data, which is always like a big, a big helper, you know? Sure. Um, so I actually just pulled up A to Z and you should see it now. I'm just goofing mm -hmm. around. I just typed in, you can type in for a keyword search, although this is not exhaustive. So I just typed in dance clubs, dance companies, dance shoe stores. You can do dance studios, schools, and halls, <laughs> which is what you're looking for. So if we update yeah. our count, 8,000 or 8,500, uh, cool. you know, yeah. And, um, you know, you can narrow it down by address and whatnot, and you can export these things. So I'll just do the search. And just so people can see, this is mm -hmm. something you can do at home with your Boston Public Library card. And if you don't have a BPL card, um, we can put a link in the chat uh, for you to sign up for an e-card and you can download this data. So and this is, thank you so much for pointing this out, Amber, because I feel like, I mean, even I don't realize all the time, like what amazing access people have to so many cool because okay, this is a paid service like there's so many mm -hmm. things that you can get through the library that otherwise would cost so much um that you have free access to just by having your library card so right. this is one, definitely one of them and it's pretty awesome because then you would just now when you're when you're putting this in a mapping tool you'd have to do some formatting and you guys would help with that as well exactly i believe it would be you'd click off comma delimited Okay. And then you'd, I think it's been a minute since I've done this, but I think it's details view mm -hmm. where you can see um, everything basically. Right. Where it's yeah. going to give you like all the fields and it's li literally like how many <clears throat> customer or how many employees work here is, would be like a field in the table. Like is the, uh, you know, <laughs> like is the business owner female is the, um, uh, what are the operating hours? Like, what are, you know, th they have like literally every, every piece of information about. Yeah, sure. Business. Yeah. So. Actually, what I'll do is I will just click on something because like the New York City Ballet pops up in this. That's one thing I would like to point out that occasionally there is more than one classification for a business. So sometimes <laughs> you might get something a little wacky uh, in there, but here's the long latitude and longitude uh, data and it's right mm -hmm. in the information. So mm -hmm. I pulled that up for folks so they can see that as well. That's um, so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be available. Like what's, what's amazing about this is that if you find the right code for the right kind of industry you're mm -hmm. looking for, you can fill, use this database to filter that way. Mm -hmm. And then you will be able to extract in tabular format, all of the records for all the businesses. And I think you can even put 
I think you can put geographic filters on it so that it doesn't give you like, like if you want the whole United States, you can, but you could also say like, I think there's a filter where you could say, just give me mass or something. Or give oh, me yep. Like exactly. You can yeah. go down to, uh, let me revise my search. I don't think yeah, you can do census do block, it. but you so can do like a yeah. radius around a zip code. You mm -hmm. can do a map based search, mm -hmm. which will blow up my computer while we're trying to do this. <laughs> Um, but you can, you can upload like a geographic okay. shape to this mm -hmm. if you want. And we to. can, we can help you either search yourself or get acquainted with the tool, mm -hmm. uh, which we often encourage because it kind of gives you more freedom to be able to do your own data analysis. But if you are struggling with it, we can also help you extract it and get it into a format that's easy to work with. Sure. And then someone's just asking for the link to A to Z databases. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show every uh, how everybody can get to all of our database databases here at the BPL. There's two ways. The first is just to go to Books and More, uh, and then I click on Online Resources, and um, I always go to this tab over here, uh, this blue button, and I click on A to Z. I just realized I hope I have that on the screen. Oh, good. <laughs> I have demoed multiple things now doing this live stream and had the wrong slide up so no one can see. Um, and then effectively, you would just go to A to Z databases and it's right here. So I'll put this link. The reason why I'm pasting this link is because like if, we, if there are changes to our proxy server, the link that I... Um, that I might post in the chat might need to be updated later. So I'm just posting to this particular page. So I hope that's okay, Jean, uh, or Jane, sorry. Um, so that's all there. The other way to cheat is like, you can just search. So up, upstairs, we're, upstairs, ugh, up at the top of the page where it says search the catalog, you can go to website and then you can just type in A to Z databases, all one word. And this is the link to A to Z databases. And there's a nice tutorial link to that. So I will also put this in the chat for folks so oh, that they great. have it. Um, so there's two ways of getting access to the databases on our website. So if you're looking for that. Um, so hopefully that's helpful for folks. That's helpful uh, for me. I might point people to that tutorial. I didn't know that was there. <laughs> yeah. Oops, I minimized. We got to put that back up. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a whole tutorial. And um, so there's NAICS codes and SICK codes. Do you recommend people use the NAICS codes or the SICK codes? Um, I'd have to like uh, go back and research more. Uh, it's not fresh on my mind right now. It's probably been a mi minute, but okay. uh, why? What do you do? Um, <laughs> I should ask it depends. You, you're a librarian. <laughs> yeah, I know. It depends. Most of the time I tell people to pick the NAICS codes. Um, they are currently being updated. SIC codes, to my knowledge, are not currently being updated. In fact, the NAICS code supplanted these in 1992. But the thing that's cool about the SIC codes is like they're smaller buckets. So if you really wanted mm. certain things, uh, certain granular search, mm -hmm. it, it does work that way. Uh, or you, you can search for those things. Uh, but for the NAICS codes, there is something sort of problematic though. So if you're looking for a kind of tech company or whatever, it might be under like services, not otherwise specified. So there's always an issue with some of the data that you're looking for. Or if you're looking for like Google, for example, it's under something ridiculous like search engines, which is not <laughs> what Google yeah, only yeah. does. So yeah. I believe, I do believe that we have thus far given the extremely glazed over overly enthusiastic yes. <laughs> uh, promotion of this and haven't yet so far talked about, you know, how uh, it can be quite clumsy in some cases, right? Like, you know, just because we search for uh, the 7911 code for dance studios, schools and halls, that does not by any means mean that that's going to give you everything that you want. Sure. Um, and often what will happen is depending on what you're trying to research and mm -hmm. you know what you're trying to show, this might be a good starting place to see like what type of data is available already right. and then what additional steps you might need to take to augment or clean the data to get it exactly like, or, you know, combine mm -hmm. with other sources of data to get to like, for instance, Amber, that, um, mm -hmm. that map that you showed earlier of the food deserts, right? Like oftentimes when you see a, a visualization, it's, 
the combination of lots of different steps that the analyst has mm -hmm. done to you know, combine the data, do apply like analysis, uh, do lots of cleaning and lots of little small tweaks to create a visualization that ultimately does, um, you know, show the type of thing that they want to show. So that's going to be true uh, for any sort of research project that you're mm -hmm. trying to do with your data. Um, you'll often need to, uh, you know, start at, <laughs> at a log logical starting place, but then, you know, do lots of lots of different cleaning and analysis. And, and oh, you know, yeah. we're here to we're here to help you with that uh, uh, as you start to try to think about how you want to format your tables and uh, the like. So, sure. I'm going to pull up your uh, research and geospatial data page again, so folks oh, can you see so that. Much. Yes, we we really we really are excited for people to uh, yeah. use our one. I mean, I think it's just like having access to these. Um, mm -hmm these databases was like an amazing thing you might not know about. Also um, having sort of this like one-on-one -on -one personalized research support yep. is another thing I feel like people don't know that is like available, but to me seems like really awesome. So thank yeah. you for showing people this. No problem. And I was going to say, speaking of one-on-one -on -one help, we also do help folks uh, with their research. So uh, folks can email us at askatbpl.org if you're looking to get started trying to find some of this data. We also have drop-ins each week. So Ooh. on Thursday mornings at 10, we have um, small business drop-ins. Um, so like if you wanted to some one-on-one -on -one help using A to Z databases or Mergent Intellect, which is another resource that we have, which gives similar data. Um, but A to Z is really great for the U.S., but Mergent has uh, international data in it. Um, and um, also, we also have some, uh, some other resources. So like if you wanted to have a small business legal consultation, we have that as well. I have that information up. Uh, and um, if you want to meet with a small business mentor, I also have placed that um, on the screen so folks can can attend that. But you can always email us at ask at bpl.org. If you get lost and you send a map question to ask at bpl.org, we'll get it to the Map and Education Center folks for you as well. But this page right here has all the geospatial um stuff on it and I linked that in the chat but I can definitely put that in again in case people missed it awesome so, yeah. yeah yeah I think the first time you did uh just the research one yep it's research slash geospatial love yep. you on slash research slash geospatial so I just popped that in the chat so um that is there as well so mm -hmm. it's one of those things where like you'll have a team of researchers to help mm -hmm. you <laughs> so to take advantage um so yeah are there any other um services that the map center has that you want to just highlight a, uh, a little bit or yeah i mean we like i said there you could spend your entire day looking at the, the <laughs> stuff that we have online um depending on what you're interested in uh the cool thing about maps is that I mean, it's one of my catchphrases, but I, I like to say, you know, everything happens somewhere. <laughs> so, it's true. you know, regardless of what topic you're interested in, we have um, probably maps that go back way back in time that, um, mm -hmm. that show, you know, really cool, really beautiful, really visual, um, really visual stuff. Um, <clears throat> and everything that we have online is available in the most high resolution versions as, as possible. So, you mm -hmm. know, if you find one of our, you know, maybe you could pop over to our digital collections page or our exhibitions page. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it's, it's collections.lemonsonmap.org. Um, yeah. Any, any map that you find in there, you're going to be able to zoom in, you know, literally to like the paper grain and be able to see every detail so rich and beautiful. Uh, and because we make these available, uh, at the highest possible resolution. Those are free for you to download. Like you can do whatever you want with those. Um, oh, cool. And bring them into your project. Um, we have even some that are already like geo referenced. So you could bring them into, uh, you know, your own software, mm -hmm. uh, especially our urban atlases, which we uh, have made available recently through our tool Atlas Scope, which uh, you should check out. We have upcoming programming. Uh, we're, we're doing like these tours around all the different uh, br library BPL branch neighborhoods where we're going to each branch virtually oh. and exploring all the like history of the of the neighborhoods using these like 
you know, amazingly detailed maps from the 19th century that we've sure. recently made available through this tool Atlas scope. So definitely check out our calendar. Um, uh, I just yeah. pulled up your Eventbrite page, so I'll pop that okay. in. Okay, love that. Yeah, so we're going to Upham's Corner. We're going to Fields Corner. Oh, okay. I don't have the memories. I think West Roxbury and North End are our next ones. But yeah, yep, those exactly that's really fun. So we do all sorts of like cool talks and lectures and online events. Um, we have really cool um, exhibitions available, like sort of in perpetuity, like on our website as well. Mm -hmm. So we do rotating themed exhibitions um and we where we you know describe the the maps with like all this interpretive information and we make those available uh forever and yeah you can go ahead and like a, you could spend like hours reading through these there's so much to explore depending on what topic you're interested in so oh yeah so much to explore yep if you have any questions you can always message us if you have a general question about like you know, what you know, our hours or something, you can uh, message info at leventhalmap.org. But if you want to, you know, start researching with our collections or have questions about the collections or data, you can use those, mm -hmm. um, those research links that you've posted. Oh, cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Let me see if people posted their coffee cups. Sometimes we get people who post their coffee cups. So I'm just curious. Oh, uh, looks like no one posted today, but that's okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry that you're you're having a hard time getting this to catch on. <laughs> it's okay. It's fun. It's a Tuesday morning and it's it's a crummy uh actually it's beautiful. Um I love rain, but the thought of going out in it, oh terrible. Um yeah. So let's see. Uh I think I had another question. Let's see. <laughs> let's see. Let me just make sure there's no questions in the chat. Yep, I don't, right. see, I don't see any. Okay. So. So maybe maybe people are feel sated with the amount of that. Maybe they're all just exploring, like they're already diving in. And. <laughs> oh yeah. So like this fun map is pretty cool. I'm gonna get rid of this. I have too many tabs open, so I'm like going through and just like cleaning out some some stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. Um, hmm. I do have a question about this geo referencing site mm -hmm. section of the site. Is okay. now these are all maps that have already been geo referenced? Is that is geo referencing? That... Oh yes, yes. So basically, uh, there are there is an aspect of our current digital collections page that points to mm -hmm. uh, uh, that can give a little bit of information about the maps that are built baked into our collections like which ones you can overlay and which ones you can download that are okay. already in geospatial format um it works a little clunky if you have questions about um you know ac being able to access any of our maps uh in geospatial formats you can just message me directly and i'll help you uh figure out how to georeference how to bring the georeference maps into mapping software um how to access the high the different formats of data that our our collections are made available in okay um yeah. actually can you speak a little bit about some of the stuff you do for educators as well oh definitely i'd love to uh yeah we have we're, we're very very uh enthusiastic and proud about uh the sort of programming that we offer mm -hmm. um if you go to the four educators tab yeah um Again, this is we're, we're really excited for our new website launch. We're gonna have lots of like really cool features available for teachers mm -hmm. available. Um, but basically, like, it's it's amazing for especially for 2020, uh, where <laughs> you know you may be a teacher and you're like, uh, what do I do? Yeah. You know, like uh, especially as it relates to like uh, teaching about maps. Like, there we have basically taken so many different topics uh, of inquiry and really um, our educators are very, very well, know uh, well versed and knowledgeable about like what the different standards are for different grade levels for especially like history okay. education um, and uh, have built and created these ama this amazing menu of curriculum um, that's available uh, that you can teach yourself. 
Um, or we have, we, you know, we have like programming opportunities available through our website. You can uh, go online and check out uh, if you're a teacher, if you want us to come and teach at your school. Oh, nice. uh, there's, yeah, there's lots, there's, there's so much. One, one thing that we're, we're really excited about is recently we've been um, mm-hmm. working on a, a program called Empowering Maptivists that okay. uh, really focused on it, it's very related to data where we're, we're going to Boston Public High Schools and we're working with nice. the students and the, and the teachers and yeah we're it's so cool it's like uh we're we're uh learning a lot from the students who are exploring uh different issues around the city and working with um librarians and uh different uh mm-hmm. city people to to like explore issues and come up with like action plans for uh things that we want to change so that's like a really fun thing that uh, our and really quite actually very important thing that um, uh, our education team is is working with uh, uh, teachers and students about right now. That's really great because that's like another component of literacy, just being able to understand what's going mm-hmm. on in a map and where that data comes from and doing mm-hmm. the that, that research. Oh, that's awesome. And then using yeah, it to tell a story. Yay. Yeah, that's what we that's what we really tend to try to stress is that like, if you want information nowadays, this is the format that it's in. So, you know, these types of services, I think, are really, really important. Um, and honestly, like, I think they should be even more available than they already are. And mm-hmm. our services are like a good start at, at getting there, you know. OK, now, actually, I meant to ask this earlier and it seems like a no brainer, but it, do you have a limited geographic coverage for the kinds of maps that you have in your collection and have digitized? Oh, Amber, good question. Um, <clears throat> the answer in short is no, we don't. We, we have maps of the entire world. Ah. Um, I think, you know, and honestly, if you message me and you wanted to find data about Mars, I could try to help you. <laughs> we our collections tend to focus on Boston and, okay. and New England. Um, so at, in terms of what we actively collect, we're really interested in exploring issues around Boston um, and you know a little bit more broadly around New England. But that does not mean that we can't help you find cartographic and geographic materials for outside of those areas. Oh, OK, OK. So if someone wanted to do like a project on like Mongolia or something. Yeah, absolutely. And and a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of what like librarians can help you with is even if we're not the person that has the stuff that you need we probably know who does um so we have lots of good research skills to find uh where those resources are and we can connect you with librarians uh you know across the country or the world even to to find what you're what you're looking for oh that's awesome mm-hmm. yeah how many geospatial librarians are there i'm just curious because mm-hmm. like you and like um like you and a couple of folks that are at the map center at Map and Education Center are the only geospatial librarians I've ever met. So um, I'm just curious. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, I probably know more than you. <laughs> Obviously, than you. yeah. Uh, we Typically, you'll find uh, a lot of GIS librarians at um, universities because uh, um, okay. you know, they're supporting student bodies where uh, there's coursework around, you know, doing mapping projects, exploring mm-hmm. the world geographically, learning software that makes, you know, a student marketable. Um, and for that reason, uh, there are librarians uh, on staff to support those sort of information needs. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's kind of a great question because it's part of our mission, really, like at the Leventhal Map and Education Center. We don't think that you should have to pay for admission to college to be able to have support for these types of topics and this type of access to very critical information. So that's really what, you know, makes me want to work here and, and, you know, help with these types of things. So what we have here in the Map and Education Center is something really special then, because literally oh. anyone off the street can come in and, and get the support, which is Thanks, just Amber. wonderful. Yeah, well, no, it's always so cool. And I, and like, it's one of those things, like, I wish I had, uh, you know, the know-how, maybe I should, you know, harass you a little bit more to learn yeah. some of this stuff for <laughs> like little projects and whatnot. Uh, just because like, it's such a wonderful set of skills um, that can be used to tell so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. So let's check the chat. And <laughs> oh, quiet morning this morning so that's okay mm-hmm. yeah but you know what we're here 24 7 I mean I won't <laughs> uh, I think I think we actually did get a request last night at 1 17 that we were both <laughs> copied on so oh yes <laughs> yes we I, might uh... not get back to you till the next day but you can you can request our services at any time <laughs> yes 
<laughs> so it's been funny um just um just doing the work remotely and so like i think when people think of maps and I, we touched on this a little bit earlier they think of either google maps or they think of like some like dusted off map that like nick cage is looking at in a movie <laughs> so like you have both and so i imagine that um you miss sort of uh going back to some of these the these collections um but it's great a lot of them are online you know yeah that's true. Yeah. I, I mean, there is something very special about the fact that we take care of this incredibly important uh, collection and we definitely are so excited for when we can welcome our researchers back. But in the meantime, actually, I believe on our on our website, we have a page specifically dedicated to remote resources for uh, for learning. Um, I might be phrasing the title and maybe it's resources for remote learning. Uh, but in any case, there's a really, really good guide on our on our main website. Um, I can find that and pop it into YouTube chat. Um, okay, cool. But uh, we've, we have gotten some uh, leventhalmap.org. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, we have gotten some feedback from uh, faculty, other, other educators. Oh, yeah. This, that this guide has been quite helpful for them in coming up with stuff to do uh, and, you know, really actually quite useful uh, learning learning activities and critical resources. Uh, so this this has been vetted by, you know, actual teachers. And <laughs> uh, so you can um, find that, find that there. Yep. So I just popped that into the chat. Oh, so. yeah, this is the K through 12 one. And then we also I think we have one for um, everybody. Uh, oh, okay, cool. Where it just kind of like points to, oh, maybe that is it. Oh, yes, 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 perfect. So it's leventhalmap.org slash research slash remote teaching. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this gets really into like, it's a pretty comprehensive ah, guide. I really so do think it's a great guide, yeah. This is the one for adults. Okay, found it. <laughs> It's uh, it was hidden under the uh, research tab. I went I right to the for teachers. I'm sorry. Tab. We need we need. We're so excited to launch our new website. We're like yeah. chomping at the bit. <laughs> no, but that'll be exciting. Yeah. For adults. Or whatever. Oh, I can't type to save my life. So I just popped that into the chat as well, so folks have access. How uh, many links to, to go to? <laughs> yeah. No, it's great. But it's one of those things like. There's so much material online and uh, it's, it's hidden. Where to start, anyway. yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's great that you can, that, that folks can sort of get a, get a feel for and the taste for some of the yeah, services. I, yeah, and I wanna stress that too, that like if you wanna just, if you're just having a hard time making sense of like mm -hmm. where something is, like message us, like we can help you with these complex pro projects or we can just be like, where is that guide that <laughs> I want, you know? like. Mm -hmm. So message, message us if you have any question, big or small. Okay. So I have I've pulled up that page again. And like what's great about, I love this page just because like it gives examples where you're just <laughs> trying to, especially if you're trying to, if, if you're not used to like cartography or geospatial mm. information, it gives you the language a little bit <laughs> to sort of get you going. And plus, okay. <laughs> go ahead. No, I was just saying, thank you for, for pointing that out. We really tried to say, uh, you know, is, is this what you want? So we give, tried to give some examples like on that. Oh, if you go back down to the bottom, like in that yep. geospatial project example section. Mm -hmm. So these are the types of things that these are great examples of things that you might, um, you might want some help with. Okay. So it is almost 11 o'clock. It is, um, it is, let's see, 1059. So any questions, we'll pause here and see if folks have any questions. Um, and then we'll be on our merry way. Maybe I'll get some cocoa because today's a cocoa day. <laughs> My goodness. I'm glad I made stew earlier this week because oh. like, yeah, I, I busted out the crock pot. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, well, Amber, thank you so much for having me. No problem. Uh, I just want to pull up the, 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 the contact information again, just so folks have it. Mm -hmm. um, so you can always email us at ask at bpl.org if you want like help with some business and demographic data. If you, if you think you know where you want to start, 
Um, and then you can also uh, attend a drop-in with folks um, if you wanted to. Uh, I'll pull that up. So if folks are looking to start a small business, and it, in particular, a lot of this geographic data might be great to include in a business plan. So to help make a compelling argument of why you're citing your store in a particular place, or perhaps you're running a nonprofit or want to start a nonprofit and you want to showcase the social issues uh, in an impactful way using maps and data, it's a great place to start. So we have drop-ins every Thursday morning at 11 uh, and uh, my colleagues do that and you can find that on our website and I was also going to say we also have drop-ins every Friday for nonprofits uh, and you can find those on the BPL website. Um, so uh, Belle, I really wanted to thank you for coming and chatting with us today. Um, I, I, I appreciate your time and like dispensing all this magical wisdom, you know? <laughs> thank you, Amber. And thank you so much for uh, pointing to our resources and making sure that uh, people that want to be able to find them uh, know where to go. <laughs> so yes. I really appreciate that. <laughs> no problem. It, it's, it's truly a hidden treasure and a special, special s set of services that I, I think just needed to be highlighted. So, right, thank you so much <laughs> thank you so so much talk to you soon <laughs> yes talk to you later have a good one and thank you everybody for joining us this morning let us know if you have any questions have a good day